Hello everyone, Vanguard of Valor here, and welcome back to Sunless Sea. We've just found the treasure of the First Emperor, and now the delightful adventuress has betrayed us. We have two options. We can try and attack her, but that will not go well for us. Or we can simply obey. And I think in this case, this isn't worth the risk. We're already slightly wounded, and I'd rather not die here, and we'll see if we can't perhaps get out of this somehow. After all, we've done everything else, she asked. The delightful adventuress lowers the rapier and sly smiles tightly. It's nothing personal, of course, she adds. I was rather hoping for more souls here, so we could have shared, shaken hands, and been on our merry way, but needs must. Barnabas, with haste, if you please. Well, the clay man finishes gathering the souls. This could be going better. A delightful scheme. Such simple things, aren't they? Says the delightful adventuress. Goodness only knows what the devils do with them. But opportunity is opportunity, is it not? My friends in the Iron Republic were quite happy to agree safe passage to and from their homeland in exchange for this legacy. They will have to be satisfied, I suppose. Her lips turn into a smug smile. And next time I bid the accursed Leonora Fortescue go to hell, well, I shall be able to recommend the bloody sights. A calculated risk. With a bag over her shoulder, she's going to be slower. We just have to avoid that poisoned sword. Or we can do nothing and form a plan later. The monkey has built this tomb by copying stories. The stories always have a way out. Hmm... I kind of want to ambush her later. I don't think we want to try and attack her right now. She has a poisoned sword, which is bad news for us on our own. Not, however, the door. Well, that's that then, she says, backing out of the vault. Oh, except for one minor detail. Barnabas, I thank you for your loyalty and fine service. As a final courtesy, please do the honors and ensure our friend here remains buried. It is such a final resting place, is it not? Such a shame to be wasted on just one ape. The clay man lurches as she produces one of our confiscated sticks of dynamite, lights it, and drops it in the corridor. Before either of us get close, it explodes in a cloud of dirt and rubble that seals the exit. Barnabas has no face. He does, however, most definitely have expressions. The one he wears now is chilling. Well, she didn't just betray us, she also betrayed her unfinished man. What have you done? We can attempt to dig a way out. She won't get away with this. A helping hand. Barnabas immediately joins us in the excavation. Were he a regular clay man, he would be likely obeying his last order right now and ending our life for his mistress. Being unfinished, however, he is no mere golem. In her arrogance, the delightful adventuress appears to have forgotten that loyalty is a two-way street. Even with both of us dig digging, though, it will take far too long to clear the rubble. If the delightful adventuress gets back to our ship with the legacy, she will no doubt persuade the crew to leave without us. We can search for a way out, or we can have the monkey, monkey foundling come to our rescue. We have nothing to dig out with our hands. So we have two ways out of here. Either we can get the monkey foundling's help, or we can use a flare. I always... It seems like whenever you're going in somewhere dark, you always need a flare and some candles. It seems pretty consistent that the dark places always need both of those. When we come back for the spiders, we're going to bring a flare and some candles, too. The monkey foundling comes to the rescue. Do we want to use that here? Why not, monkey foundling? You're our hero, after all. You deserve your moment of glory. Just don't have anything bad happen to you, please. Hello? She calls, hanging upside down by your face and grinning. The entire Empire of Hands is her playground, and this temple's no exception. She heard the bang of the dynamite all the way on the Ash Isthmus, and came over to see what it was. Now she sees it's a friend. Helping, grins the monkey foundling, letting us climb up her rope. Barnabas remains behind, too heavy. He continues to dig his way out, rock by rock. Interesting. So maybe if we had used the flare, Barnabas would have been able to make it out? I don't know. A delightful reunion. It appears the delightful adventuress is having problems of her own by the rowboats. A double betrayal. 
Whatever the once flea-ridden mayor of Port Stanton took from the delightful adventuress's soul, it evidently came with her loose grip on ethics. He suspected she would try to sneak away without giving him his cut. He was not wrong. Unfortunately for her, he has a small squad of monkeys at his disposal. Unfortunately for him, she has both her rapier and one last stick of dynamite for mutually assured unpleasantness. Well, says the delightful adventuress, seeing you approach, this is an irritating stalemate. Interesting. We can team up with the delightful adventuress. With her poisoned rapier and your wits, you can take out these uppity apes. We can team up with the mayor. Or we can propose a fair deal. What do we want to do here? It's hard to say what we really want to do at this stage, because if we team up with the delightful adventuress, that could really hurt our relationship with the, uh, the whole empire of hands, and we don't really want to do that. If we team up with the mayor, we still have the problem of her having a poisoned rapier against us. If we propose a fair deal, everyone can be happy. I don't know if she'll accept that. And I thought we were going to try and give these souls to the, uh, to the Zeppelin. I think the uh, Delightful Adventuress has come to an unfortunate end. I think we're going to team up with the mayor here and try and take advantage of our position with the Pentecost apes to even further solidify our safety. Let's see what happens here. I don't know if this is going to work, but we're going to we're going to team up, with, team up with the mayor. As despicable as he is, she is just as despicable. The delightful adventurous snarls. Species traitor, she spits, lowering the rapier. Even she acknowledges now that she is unmatched. But then comes a rumbling sound from the jungle. She glances over her shoulder and back with a sudden look of endless smugness as Barnabas slowly trudges towards her from the vault. Splendid, she declares. Barnabas, do please deal with this smelly animal. And also the monkey. Something tells me this isn't going to go well for you, lady. The triumph of the delightful adventuress. Barnabas's clay muscles seem to swell as he lumbers forward, silent but purposeful. An unfinished man of clay. Clay men are obedient. Clay men are loyal. Clay men are reliable. Unfinished clay men can be all of these things, too. They can, however, be them by choice, rather than nature. They can also hold grudges extremely well. The delightful adventuress shrieks in fury as Barnabas effortlessly picks her up, dangling her upside down by one leg. The obscenities are muffled by her skirts falling over her mouth, but the gist is quite clear. Well then, says the mayor, carefully eyeing up the clay giant's spare arm. Should we talk deals now, perhaps? We can say we split the legacy three ways. We, the mayor, and Barnabas, though it seems unlikely that the mayor will agree to a straight three-way split. Or we can say we donate the legacy to the Zeppelin. This will completely fulfill its requirement for souls. The mayor keeps the remainder to do with as he chooses. Receive the payment from the Wild Wheeled Court. This seems like the obvious choice. I don't know what doing this Zeppelin quest does, but trying to get a hundred souls any other way sounds like a completely unreasonable thing. So, if we want to try and accomplish this Zeppelin task, we can do this, and we'll still get a payment from the Wild Wheeled Court. So, this way, we accomplish a goal and get a reward, and we don't have to worry about a 31% chance of success. Let's try it. The mayor agrees. Of course he does. The boost to his courtly profile will be tremendous. The deal is struck. Also, we will take that one adds the mayor, pointing at the delightful adventuress, trying to sneak away our emperor's legacy. Ugh. Oh, no, don't worry. The punishment is not severe. We approve of the avarice. Still, he grins, we will teach her a little lesson, yes, then banish in shame. A gift to you from the empire. What did I... What did I get? I got more status. That doesn't do anything. Hmm. 
So we can punish the delightful adventuress, we can let Barnabas decide her fate, or we can refuse to allow her to be punished. Honestly, I think she probably does deserve it. And she's not getting a ride home. She has betrayed us pretty darn hard here. And, uh... I think it's only fair that she gets a little bit punished for her time. She spent her soul, which is probably punishment enough already, but no, I'm going to punish her. She deserves it. Barnabas dips his head in farewell. He follows the monkeys into the woods towards their boat, still carrying a thrashing, delightful adventuress. He will not allow her to come to any real harm, but appeals to concur that a little humility may be in order. But that is their business. Ours now lies elsewhere. Well. It looks like we've survived. <laughs> wow. Let's check out the Zeppelin here. Does anything actually happen with the fact that we've given them all the souls? Yeah, they're, they're there. A respected visitor to the Wild Wheeled Court can arrange a more efficient supply of fuel from elsewhere. The exquisite Seneschal may have a distasteful way of acquiring many of the supplies required for free. Interesting. Well, there are other fast ways to do this without actually having to bring a hundred to each place. So let's go back. Let's go investigate the court first. We've been here for a while, but I think there's more to do. Also, let's take an audience with the mayor. Ah, he's still a four-souled ape because we didn't let him take any of the extra ones. That's right. Well, we have no desire to speak with him right now, so we will pass out again. And Zale the Empire of Hands, this time to the Wildwood Court, where we are quite well respected, I think. Let's travel and see what they have to say. The guards nod and open the gates for us. There is no welcome. They stare at the ground throughout. Well then, there are quite an interesting number of things available to us now. There's the delightful adventuress. We can trade with the Wild Wheeled Court. Hmm. The Chandler of Souls. Our rising status in court has inspired assorted parties to inquire about our willingness to meet. Interesting. The Silent Gallery. While the Emperor sleeps and feasts, the exquisite Seneschal coordinates the Great Exodus. Or we are as well a visitor in court. We can investigate with that. Hmm. Let us first see what the, uh, the Seneschal has to say. We are granted permission to enter. The silence is a pleasant slap to the face, sweetly scented with incense. Inside, the exquisite Seneschal deals with the many demands and complaints of the court. Okay, so we can tell him when the Zeppelin's ready. A plan, supplies for the Emperor. I'm not high enough, uh... High enough rank here to be... Trusted with this. Interesting. The exquisite Seneschal looks for a trusted agent to establish a relationship with the Iron Republic. Interesting. So that may be a way to do it. We establish a relationship with the Iron Republic to get our fuel from them. They do have the cheapest fuel anywhere. But they are devils. We can come back here later. We return to the chaos outside. We could live all here all our life and never get used to the noise and smell. The prospect is not a tempting one. We'll come back and chat with the Seneschal later, I think. There are some other interesting things here instead. We have the Chandler of Souls to talk to. I have no idea what this is all about, but... First of all, we will trade to the Wild Wheeled Court and then investigate the delightful adventuress. A small group of powder-faced apes in the red-trimmed robes of court mandarins invite us into a quiet, cushioned room. Drinks and honey cakes are served, and business carefully not discussed. After a while, however, the charade gives way to polite expectation. We have a gift, a gift of wine. We also have a gift of red honey. Let's give them some wine. The berries of the Empire of Hands make a bitter wine, apologize the Mandarin. They are always such a treat, the vintages of London, before the unpleasantness. Here you go, have a gift of wine. The Empire of Hands does, however, brew a most fine coffee, muses the Mandarin. It looks so little like the kind you would find back home. It smells like it. It tastes utterly indistinguishable. Pure coincidence, he declares, gesturing for more. Okay, well, we've traded mushroom wine for dark drop coffee beans, which is interesting. And uh, we've gained two more status with the Empire of Hands. We can also trade them red honey, seemingly for a pot of violent ink. It is so hard to come by, muses the Mandarin idly, fondling a pot of rare violent ink. A pity. 
The exquisite seneschal is known to have uses for it. I'm not surprised. We saw red honey earlier. Those red honey flakes. If we give this away, we're giving away a lot of money. Red honey is very expensive to buy, and I believe it sells for at least 600 echoes. But violent ink is a rare thing. It's one of the colors we need. I, I think there's other ways to get it, but this time we'll pay the price. We'll spend a firkin of red honey, expensive though it is, to acquire a pot of violent ink. Well, a deliberate accident. Did you pick up the pot of violent ink instead of the honey you were showing to him? How clumsy. At least you have the perfect substance, should you feel the urge to write a polite apology note at some later date. A small little trade. Well, what do you know? With apologies, no gifts today. We do not have anything worthy of such company, or at least that is the lie it feels safest to tell them. The mandarins bow, stiffly and pointedly. It was, they do not need to feel the need to say, their pleasure. Interesting. Let's talk with the delightful adventuress. She stands fuming, her head and hands locked tight in a pillory near the center of the palace. She glares as you approach. Do not even think about it, darling, she spits. When I return to London, there shall be a reckoning. My friends in the Admiralty will not stand for this. Mark my... Oh, look, a monkey selling rotten vegetables. You can buy a tomato and throw it. Or we can decline the opportunity. It costs ten echoes for a tomato. Heavy and squishy in just the right stages of rot. Juices drip down our hand as we squeeze its soft skin. Barnabas stoically stands by his seething mistress, ensuring the monkeys do not take their fun too far. His bruised loyalty does not, however, stretch to interfering with the opportunistic monkey selling ammunition. I don't think our aim is very good, but we'll take a shot. Why not? Let's give it a try. She, we, de we deserve a little bit of vengeance for what she put us through. We succeeded. What do you know? A direct hit. The rotten tomato splatters into the delightful adventuress's face, dripping from her hair and chin as she splutters in coherent rage. The monkeys cheer wildly. We spent ten echoes, but we've gained five more status with the Empire of Hands and succeeded in our Iron Challenge. Oh, good. That seems like an appropriate thing to do. Let's visit the Imperial Alchemist, read in the smells of honey, wax, and liquor. The Alchemy of Souls. The Alchemist arranges a set of souls on a shelf. In fallen London, it is believed that Pentecost apes thirst for any... For the savage unsold, that is true. Once uplifted, however, their attention soon turned to finding the right souls, both individually and as a mix. There is no greater honor for an emperor than to be entombed with their souls unreclaimed. It is a declaration that none other could hope to do as much with them. Of course, what they see as uplifting could be simple copying, nothing more. To so suggest that here, however, is considered highest heresy, for it implies the emperor fit to rule on merely his own merits. Unthinkable. We've gained more status in 25 fragments. We are very high status now, aren't we? Indeed we are. Let's visit the silent gallery again. We are again granted permission to enter, and it's time to talk about some other plans. We can talk about a plan for supplies for the Zeppelin. What do you have to say about this? The cannibal pirates of Hearthsake Island have long been a thorn in the Empire's paw. With a few little drops of this vial, you could deal with them for good. Their supplies would be very welcome for the voyage. We have a very potent poison. We could also get a plan fuel for the Zeppelin. The exquisite Seneschal looks for a trusted agent to establish a relationship with the Iron Republic. Interesting. The exquisite Seneschal provides us with a signed contract in a language it is unlikely any human can read. If we take it to the Iron Republic, they will provide us with hydrogen. It will take several trips to fully supply the Zeppelin, but there will be no charge. Interesting. 
Well then, so we have a way to get fuel, we have a way to get supplies. I don't know if we will finish this anytime soon. We might start bringing supply runs every time we come out this far, but for now, we will leave the pirates to their affairs. We'll deal with their murders later, perhaps. For now, we'll return to the court. And from there, we will leave. Have yourselves a good day, my simian companions. I think it's time we left this place. We've spent quite a long time here in the Empire of Hands, and I believe enough is enough. Now, we set sail once again. It is time to move along. We head to Mount Palmerston, where we should be able to acquire some fuel, not for an incredible price, but at a price, and that is the important thing at the moment, because as it stands, we are quite low on fuel, and without supplies, we'll be hard-pressed to make it back anywhere alive. And no one wants to make it back anywhere dead. Turn off our lamp for a little while to conserve some of our limited fuel. We are heading up towards Irem right now. And that is, of course, well and good. There may be useful things there for us. It's unlikely. But you never know. Something drifts face down. And we dock in Irem. None have ever spoken truthfully of this place. In the Pillared City, we have Dark Drop coffee beans. We could do something here. We will be healed, or better yet, you will be renewed. I don't know what this does. We write a port report in Irem, a most baffling task. But here's the question. Do we use our dark drop coffee beans here in the House of the Amber Sky, which may simply heal us, or do we use them to discuss with our first mate? I think we will rest here, because it is a new thing to attempt that we've never seen before. In the House of the Amber Sky, they say their cushions are petal soft. We rest our head and give them our coffee. You close your eyes. The House of the Amber Sky is a roofless, roofless space between the false stars of the Neath, rich with the scent of Irem roses. Despite the ice, it's warm as a desert evening. You will arrange yourself on the cushions. Close your eyes for just a moment. The mirror marches. Beneath the skin of dreams, behind the faces of mirrors, an orange sun sails in a fervid sky. Here are the borderlands of that place, close by Irem, and closest still to the house of the amber sky. And here you are, in another place. The sun is warm on your uncovered head. We can rest, recover, and dream. The jungle around us is rich with violently colored fruit buzzing with insects and unseen life. We can explore a little. We can search for rare fruit. Here in the mirror marches, those who are wounded can sometimes find solace, or so the story has it. With the Z story, we can cure our wounds, I think. Rarest fruit. In the farthest south, in the arms of the god called Stone, a garden blooms. In ages past, birds sold the seeds from that garden. One bird hid here in the mirror marches. Perhaps you know the story. We could unlock something with a searing enigma. Or we could bargain for a parabox. Hmm. Interesting. Yes, the serpent says dreamily. I go to meet the skin of the sun. I will die. 
the space I leave will remain in this box. I am dead here, and I do not live in the world. You live in the world, and you are not dead here. It's impossible. But it will protect your kingdom from the worst of the sunlight. Until you die. His tongue flickers. But I must drink your future first. I will not die thirsty. This will have all of your skills, which must be at least 100. It will, however, give you an item which will allow you to colonize Aistable. Well, a hundred of all stats and an empty mirror catch box will give us a para box, which will allow us to protect Aistable. What do you know? Something tells me that won't work for us here, though. Our options now are pretty simple. We can either rec rest, recover, and dream, eat rare fruit, or investigate rarest fruit. We have everything we need. This must be interesting. And I think we'll take the opportunity while we're here. Beneath the skin of dreams, behind the faces of mirrors. We've already read that. In the farthest south. I've read that too. I'm really good at keeping track of these things. This is the apple tree, which will never die. Should the forest fail and the river run to ash, still it will stand proudly. Take only one apple. Serpents are sleeping. We've lost our searing enigma, but we've acquired a Hesperidian apple. These do not grow on or under the world. Very well. And we're awake. Back in Irem. Where is the Hesperidian apple? Here it is. Right click to use this item. No thank you. I have a feeling we needed something like that. Our father's bones. There it is. The fruit of the eternal tree. That was... I had no idea that was there. <laughs> that is really convenient. Because uh, we, we would have been looking for this for a while, I think. We still have to find an eldest's end, a willing guest, a skylight. I think we've gotten the skylight. I, I think a mirror catch box counts as skylight. A miracle of science. A legend's heart. I know how to get this. We have this already. At least I think we already have this. A miracle of science. We have to get a, bring some kind of magnificently created tool there from our officers. A willing guest. Probably someone who likes fish. Perhaps our nacreous outcast would be good for that. An eldest's end, I assume, is someone like the... Um, his name. Do we have his name in here? The guy who wants us to bring all the colors. Who searches for all the colors of the Neathbo. I don't, uh, I don't recall where he's gone here. <laughs> the Tower of Hanoi Moves is still in our, our tracker there. But I think... At the moment, we are likely safe on that front. Okay, so perhaps now is not the time. We have the opportunity to search for the materials for the Impeller, a mechanic's secret in Frostfound. Hmm... Interesting. Lots of things to look at here. Lots of unusual requirements. But I think we can get most of these things. The Eldest End might also involve the chess game that we've come so close to. I'm not sure about that. And a Legend's Heart is going to be a problem. The heart of one of the great monsters. Not sure how we're going to acquire that without becoming a much more military adventure, but... As it stands, we may live long enough to find out. What else could we acquire here? 
Nothing here sells for secrets, sadly. Although we could buy more interesting treasures with our secrets. We only have six, though. Empty mirror catch boxes could be fun. Could be very fun indeed. Especially if we have to give one of them away. I'd quite like to get another one, so I think we'll buy one more. Might not be the best plan, but they seem to come in very handy. So we'll acquire one here. And we will sail onwards to our final destination, for now at least, to Mount Palmerston. On arrival there, I believe we will end this episode, though. We've accomplished a great deal today. Even if we are almost out of fuel. Let us make the trip safely. There we go. Hiram is in the northeast. What a surprise. It's right there. We were just there. I guess we haven't actually found that particular marker. But we've reached Mount Palmerston. Specifically, Port Palmerston. The land of devils. Not counting, of course, the land of devils far below, but so it goes. We've arrived here where we can pick up our supplies to make it where we need to go to the Avid Horizon, but for now, this is it. So, thank you very much for watching, everyone. This has been Vanguard of Valor, playing a little bit more Sunless Sea for you. If you've enjoyed the episode, let me know what you thought about it in the comments below, and look forward to seeing you next time. Until then... Bye-bye.